<clears throat> so I stated uh, I stated the uh, uh, what I'm trying to prove this Riemann Rock um, Riemann Rock theorem, and uh, I want to make the point that this follows. So Riemann Rock is uh, rather formal from three uh, ba uh, basic uh, facts. So these basic facts need proof, but if you believe them, then you can get, uh, you get to the result very quickly. So the basic facts, there are, there are three of these. I'm, I'm going to state two of them now. The third, um, third is about the canonical class. I'll, I'll leave that for next time. Right, the, this first time is this statement that the degree of the divisor of a function is zero. So I, state, I, I mentioned this last time. In other words, when I write divisor of f, equals zeros of f minus poles of f, the statement is that these have the same degree. Right? In other words, a, fu a rational function has the same number of zeros and poles. Right? So this is something which you can very easily believe. You could trust this. You could, t you could believe this. And immediately you get half the, half the result. Uh, how, however, you know, there are two or three different proofs of this that I know of in the literature. Different, diff slightly different ways of saying the same thing. And none of them is very easy. Uh, <coughs> so the second statement is that there exists a sequence dm of divisors with a degree of dm goes to infinity but uh, l of d so which one, which way do I want to say degree of dm minus l of dm less than a constant, less than or equal to a constant. Right. So this is, a, this is this existence statement. If I, let this, if I let this thing get very big, then the L of D has to follow along closely behind it. Right. So the statement is that this L of D is greater than or equal to the degree minus a uh, constant. Right, and we don't have to prove this. We don't have to prove this for all divisors. Uh, it's enough to prove it just for one, any infinite sequence of divisors. So, both of these, both of these come from, come easily from. Uh, the uh, Hilbert, Hilbert polynomial. Right, so the Hilbert polynomial, remember, k, so c, c is in Pn, the non singular uh, <coughs> projective uh, curve, and a k homogeneous of c, homogeneous coordinate ring. Uh, has has Hilbert Hilbert function so Hilbert function is the dimension of this P M of C equals the dimension of this guy <coughs> in degree M <coughs> and this is of the form A constant times m plus a different constant. 
Yeah. So this d, this this d here, is the degree of c. And this, the exponent m here, this is m to the power of one. <coughs> and this one is the dimension. So I explained, I explained earlier. I have this homogeneous ring. Just thinking, even even just thinking about it as a module over. The, the ring of projective space, you get out directly, and this is a very, very easy argument, it's a very easy formal argument, you get out this Hilbert, Hilbert uh, function. Right? So I'll explain this. I, uh, I don't, uh, you know, there's a tricky point here that I, I want to leave till next time. But uh, So, um, you know, <coughs> where's, so any, any f is of the form Uh, F M over G M sum M. Right, and so I'll have the degree uh, the the divisor of F is the divisor of F M minus the divisor of G M. Right, and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, well, uh, well, so so, this turns out to be. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. This is for all m. For all m sufficiently large. Okay, and then this will turn out to be the dimension of uh, k homogeneous of C divided by fm. Then <coughs> That's not what I meant to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So let me, le, 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 let me leave this till next time. Uh, anyway, these are numbers. These, these will be given. Will, these are numbers. These are numbers. Uh, closely related, so given by uh, the, this k homogeneous of C. <coughs> and it's Hilbert function. <coughs> So, uh, you know, as I said, there are several different proofs of this, of this statement, and uh, the, one I'm, the one I'm using here makes most use of this Hilbert function. And it makes it use, use of it in this way that, uh, you know, here's my curve in space, and here's, you know, forms of degree m, and then if I have two different forms of degree m, then I'm expecting to see the same number of points. So this is, uh, these, the fact that these are equal, these two things are equal, is the, the thing that's in question here. And this is sort of basically business theorem. So this is almost the same thing as business theorem. Anyway, let, let me leave this till next time. So, so, So for the moment, let's uh, believe one and two. So, so trust, let, let, let's believe, assume that one and two are true. So there's a, there's a together with the main facts, there's a main trick. The main trick is that if I look at P in C, so fix uh, and, uh, and D in divisors of C, then I can do L of D, so I can do L of D, and inside there I can do L of D minus P. Right, and I and I assert 
that this has co-dimension less than or equal to 1. So this means one of two things. Either, either L of D minus P equals L of D, or there exists some function f in L of D with, um, okay, so D, let me write D as sigma now n uh, q, q. Right, because I've got, a, I've got a fixed point P, so I can't use P as the dummy index there. Right, and so then this, if this guy is in here, so the, is this an F in L of D with F not in L of D minus P? What, what exactly does this mean? Right, it means that uh, valuation at P of F is exactly equal to NP. Right? So, I'm sorry, m minus NP. Plus NP is equal to zero. Right? So, uh, in L of D, we have the condition that VP of F plus NP is greater than or equal to zero. So, so this is supposed to be true at all points Q of the curve, but in particular, it's supposed to be true at the point P. And L of D minus P says V of P of F plus NP minus 1. It's greater than or equal to 0. So this says I'm allowed a pole of order NP. And this one says I'm only allowed a pole of order so this says you're only allowed a pole of order n minus 1. Right? And so if these two guys are different, it means, i.e., this f in L of d minus L of d minus p means that f has exactly pole of order NP. Right, in other words, V, v P of F is equal to minus NP. Right, so the condition here is that it should be greater than or equal to minus NP, and we're saying, and moreover, it's not greater than or equal to minus NP minus 1. Okay, I hope, I hope what I've said is not, is, uh, so, I mean, it's simple enough, but uh, I've probably said this in a very confusing way. So, so let me just think, let's, if we were in complex analysis, in complex analysis, my uh, near P, so near P with uh, complex coordinate ZP. I would have that F is equal to ZP and then maybe to some minus. L let, me, let me write, uh, and let me continue to write N, NP for the number. So with some coefficient here, plus some coefficient ZP to the minus NP plus 1 and then plus, and then eventually plus uh, a constant, and then plus something with Zp to positive power, and so on. So, so this, is a, this is the Laurent. So, so uh, in complex analysis, you would say this is the principal part. So I the pole of F, the poles of F, right? So to say that F 
is in L of NP means that um, means that F has pole less than or equal to N. And so if F is in L of N minus 1 P says that F has pole of order less than or equal to N minus 1. So what's the difference between these two sets? If I take something which is in there and which is not in there, it means it has pole exactly equal to N. Yeah? And so if that happens, so if there is one of these F, then I can think of this F as a local basis for all functions having the stated uh, pole. And then I can use it to subtract off the leading term. Right, so if uh, VP of F is exactly equal to minus NP, it would mean, for example, that Z uh, X, XP to, to the power of NP times F is in o X, OCP and not in the maximal ideal P. Right now, if I take any other, any other G in L of D, right, then he's going to have the same, the same property. He's going to also have the property that XNP times G is in OCP. Right, and then this, this, this guy here is invertible. Right. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't need that. This this guy has non-zero value at p. So if I do this g, if I do, if I, I if I subtract a multiple of this non-zero guy from this guy, I can eventually get zero. So g minus lambda f uh, has um, so v p g minus lambda f is greater than or equal to minus in P minus 1 for some lambda. Right? So, uh, I mean, this, this lambda is just, I take this, this guy, this, this function here, after, after taking out the pole, this function is a, is a unit at P. It's not in the maximal ideal. And so therefore I restrict it to point P, I get a value, a non-zero value. And G also I get a non-zero value, and I just subtract off the multiple of that. So uh, in other words, uh, I'm using, using use F to subtract off the leading, the leading pole, the leading term, uh, you know, Z p to the minus np in g. Okay, so this coefficient here is a constant. In this case, it's a complex number, right? And so um, <coughs> I'm just... Uh, and so then this means that... This means that g minus lambda f is in L of d minus p. Right. So I can use a multiple of f. If f has exactly the stated pole at this point, or it might be exactly the stated zero, it doesn't really matter, then after I subtract off a multiple, a suitable multiple of, of f from it, I can arrange to uh, send to zero the leading term of g. And this means that g now belongs to L of d minus p. And what this means is that f is a complementary basis. Right, so then I have L of D minus P contained in L of D. And I have this guy F there, and uh, L of D is equal to L of D minus P 
plus cot k times f. Yes? So the f is a complementary basis element. And that means that uh, um, <coughs> that means the dimension, uh, you know, when I I in a very short while these will be finite dimensional vector spaces. Right? But uh, this says that, you know, the dimension of this one minus the dimension of this one is either zero or it's one. Right? So f is a complementary basis. Have I written that? So this is the main trick. We're going to use this trick again and again and again. <coughs> so so now uh, so now I want to prove that. Uh, so now suppose that degree of d is less than zero. Then I claim L of d equals zero. And because uh, if I take f in L of d, <coughs> then I have that uh, d, I have that uh, uh, the divisor of f plus d is greater than or equal to zero. Right, that's just the definition of L of d. Okay, I don't, I don't need the brackets. Right? And so th that, that means that this guy here is of some form mp times p with all mp greater than or equal to zero. Right? But on the other hand, this is this is the degree of the degree of this, its degree is the divisor of f. The, sorry, its degree is the degree of this guy is equal to the degree of divisor of f plus degree of d. Right? And this one is zero. And this one is uh, uh, supposed to be less than or equal to zero. Right? And uh, so so this degree is the sum of the MP, and this is certainly greater than or equal to zero because I'm assuming it's positive. Right? And this is impossible. This is a contradiction. So uh, it doesn't exist, F not zero. Okay, so, so in order to prove this, I needed to know, so, so this is just the definition of L of D. L, L of D is uh, made up by functions in C who's uh, having this property, the divisor of F plus D is greater than or equal to zero. <coughs> so that's, uh, <coughs> as I said, this is a very convenient condition because if you write this, you don't have to say whether <coughs> the coefficients in D are positive or negative. You don't have to say whether you're allowing zeros or imposing poles. Uh, allowing poles or imposing zeros. Right? So I just say, di look at divisor of f plus d. Right? That's... So all at each point, this has coefficient here, which is its coefficient in divisor of f plus its coefficient in d. 
And so its degree is just the degree of this one, which is zero, plus the degree of d, which I'm assuming is a negative. Right? On the other, so on the other hand, if this is positive, then all of the MPs are positive, uh, greater than or equal to zero, and so I get uh, not, I get a contradiction. I get some number here which is positive, and at the same time it's negative. So now, now basically we're in business. So if I do, uh, if I, if now if I do this, um, uh, if I do this, um, so, so now take now degree d any, and I'm just going to choose points p1, p2, p3, and so on until d minus sum of pi has, uh, has uh, degree negative. Right? They could, be, they could be, so these are any points. They could all be the same. It doesn't really matter. I'm just taking any points in the curve. Right? So uh, I claim I claim that uh, L of D has dimension uh, less than or equal to D plus 1. So how am I going to prove this? Well, degree of D is some integer. So proof by induction on degree D. Right, so if I go if I go from D to D minus P, right, the degree of D that goes down by one. And this uh, L of D into L of D, mi D minus P, this has co-dimension. 0 or 1. So this means that L of D is L of D minus P or L of D minus P plus 1. So uh, we're doing a proof by induction on the degree of D so I can assume the result for D minus P. So by induction, uh, L of D minus P less than or equal to degree of D minus P plus 1. Right? And then when I go up to L of D, well this guy we just proved is less than or equal to L of D minus P plus 1. Right, and so that's less than or equal to L of D, the degree of D plus 1. So if you think about the first example we had, just think of polynomials of degree n. So this is one of these spaces. It's a space of, uh, uh, so on P1, L of n p infinity. So this is polynomials of degree n. Right? Then if I impose one point as a zero, I'm decreasing I'm decreasing the dimension of this space by one. And I can just do it one step at a time and every single time the di the dimension de decreases by one. Right? So in this case in this case I'm getting uh, L of D is equal to 1 plus degree d. Right, it's 1 plus n. <coughs> so this is a, a way of, uh, you know, I mean, well, I'm going to use this trick many, many times now. I'm, I'm passing from d to something 
uh, which is ev eventually going to have degree less than zero by doing. However, for the moment, I can just do this induction. I'm, I'm proving this by induction on the degree. And it's true if the degree is less than zero, because then this one is zero and this one is... Uh, <coughs> I should have said that, shouldn't I? Um, okay, okay. So now suppose, uh, now uh, believe, now assume that we know my basic fact. Namely, there exists a DM uh, se se sequence. with degree arbitrarily big, with degree of dm, uh, that tending to infinity, but um, L of d, L of d greater than degree of dm, minus some constant. So suppose we know this. So given any divisor, given any divisor D, write D is D is D plus minus d minus for the, uh, the positive and negative part. So, so I'm just doing it, uh, I'm doing a really very trivial trick here. I've got d is sigma mpp and the np are in z. I'm just dividing the mp up into positive guys, which I'm putting all in here, and then negative guys, which I'm putting all in there. So let's say no, no common. So what I'm, what I'm, I, I want to, what I want to say is that uh, then some dm beats d plus. Right? So, uh, I'll explain what I mean by this. So, uh, you know, this d is some given divisor. So it might have a hundred terms here, for example, in the d plus. So if that happens, then I just take here, I can arrange this LDM to be as large, as big as I like. Right, I can just, I, because the d, degree of the dm is going to infinity and the degree of the lm, well, maybe it lags behind a little bit, but only by a constant amount. Right, so choose m such that l of dm greater than or equal to d plus, degree of d plus. plus one. 
right? Then the point is I can do dm, and then I can do dm minus p1, and then I can do dm minus p2, and so on, where, where p1, p2, and so on, are all the points in, in d plus. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to sort of get into writing down notation. So, so let's, let's write, for example, d plus equals sum of pi. Well, here, I'm, I'm just saying this is from i equals 1 up to degree of d plus. Right? And here, repetitions. Repetitions are allowed. Right, so here I'm going to go from dm down to dm minus the first, the first point there. And then I, I do it until I exhaust all these points. So what, what happens here? So I'm doing, uh, I'm doing d, when I do, when I do this dm to, goes to dm minus p, right? The degree goes down by one, right? That's certain. I'm just taking one point away, right? And the L of dm, What happens to the L of dm? Either goes down by 1 or remains constant, remains the same. Okay, so, uh, so what am I trying to say? Um, Um, I'm sorry, I've confused myself now a little bit. Uh, Uh, so, so, so look, this argument is, is right and is going in some direction, but I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm tired and I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not following exactly what's happening. So, so the, the, the thing I'm trying to prove here is eventually, and I, I'd better leave this to the next time, eventually uh, um, we get that this statement here, L of D is greater than degree of D minus the same constant. Right, so, uh, so uh, anyway, think about it. So if, if, uh, let, me, let, me, let me make a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, next, n the next lecture is in 10 days' time on Saturday. Right, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, w again a weekend lecture. Then uh, if you look at the exercises, you will find that, uh, you know, the first part is basically just practice at using the Hilbert series formalism. So, uh, you know, you should think of this as a game. You know, you play with the Hilbert series, you, you, you know, you mess around with its coefficients and so on, and eventually you get out of very simple, uh, sim uh, simple results. The second part includes some statements which are really part of the proof of Riemann Rock. So, uh, the, main, the, main, the main conclusion of Riemann Rock is, uh, is question C, uh, is question C, C.2. Right, and it's, it's a lot of fun to do, and uh, you could regard this as a challenge to do it before I get to it in lectures. Okay. So, is there anybody who doesn't have the sheet? 
we counted So these two guys, Kim, Kim Yun Huan, is, is one of your buddies from uh, Seoul National. Is this one of yours? Well, it's, uh, it's obviously Seoul National. Anyway, I want to, and uh, who didn't sue you now? You presume you know. Uh -huh. Okay. You go. Maybe you take a copy of the... Oh, okay. okay. Can you take this or... Yeah. With a, another copy of it. Okay, so I'll see you all in 10 days' time.